Yes, here we go, number four. Lewis Stevenson from Downpatrick joins us today. I had a very enjoyable conversation with him. He's a young man doing an internship year with Youth Initiatives, just coming to the end of that. Being involved in Youth Initiatives for a number of years, you'll, you'll find out. Um, from Downpatrick, which is in Northern Ireland, and tells us all about that area and the work that Youth Initiatives do in that area. He has a huge passion for the work and is looking to go on for a career in youth work. Really enjoy talking to him. I hope you enjoy it. If you would like to hear more information about youth initiatives in Scotland and what we're doing just now, visit our website, youthinitiativescot.com. Follow us on Twitter at YISC underscore 2018 or on Instagram and Facebook at Youth Initiative Scotland. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoy the podcast and hope you enjoy meeting Lewis Stevenson, a larger than life enthusiastic young man. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great, great pleasure to have with us the Lewis Stevenson, not the longest serving Hibs player, but the Lewis Stevenson, the Downpatrick Lewis Stevenson. Um, what an honour and privilege it has been. I was at a residential recently where someone said, you know, someone told me that if Lewis was in the room, I'd know. And I think I know who Lewis is. <laughs> and there is no other... Uh, description that I can better better put towards this man. He's a delight to be around. He's he's a bundle of laughs and excitement and enthusiasm and is putting that skill and talent towards positive outcomes for young people. So thank you for joining us, Lewis. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Um, I'll just run through I'll run through the interview. Tell us you can tell us a little bit about your background of it, how you get involved in youth initiatives and, and what you're up to just now. And everything you're doing. So, without before we get into that, though, do you want to just tell us a little bit about what life looks like for you just now? Where are you working away at home? Are you busy? Are you yeah, to well, keep entertained. Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm at home uh, in Northern Ireland, and I am in Dan Patrick in my house, and yeah, it life is mental, and just working away. Doing some why I don't Patrick stuff. Good, yeah, good. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell us a little bit about what's Down Patrick like, because I think people in Scotland maybe know Northern Ireland, but I'd never heard of it. I have to confess, I'd never heard of Down Patrick until I lived in Belfast for a while. So tell us what's Down Patrick like. Down Patrick, it is a strange little town. Um, there is plenty of people. Um, that are lovely to be around. It is a town that has St. Patrick buried, apparently, in it. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's a town that's just got life in it, and it's yeah, it's amazing how, to be around. How, how big is St. Patrick? How many people live? Any idea? I think that. Um, that's a good question. I don't really know. <laughs> I've never like done a census on it. We'll maybe check. Uh, you've never done a census, no. We'll maybe check Wikipedia later. Um, <clears throat> so, County Down, St. Patrick buried there. Down Patrick. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I wonder how long it took to come up with that. Yeah, I know. It was pretty... I bet it took them a long time. <laughs> right, good stuff. Um, as an area, what what would it be like? Um, is it a fairly well-off area? Is it a fairly... Um, what what would the demographic be like in terms of social status? Countryside and it, all that? It is in the... It's, you see, Dan Patrick is a town where it's got um, very low poverty estates and then it has very high poverty like very high wealth estates um and where i come from it would be a low poverty estate so it would be a council estate um and yeah it's just a it's just a town that has got 50 50 but i personally would class it as the countryside just because 
whenever you walk outside of the Downpatrick area um, town, you, you're surrounded by fields. The whole, the whole town is just surrounded by fields. It's got a big, big road leading to Belfast, but that whole road is just fields if it wasn't a road. <laughs> so hey. it's the country. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good. How far from Belfast is it then? Um, under it would be under thirty miles, easy. Like, nice. what? It, no, I don't really know, but it it's not that far from Belfast. It's like a forty-five minute drive. So, yeah, okay. however miles that is, <laughs> yeah, it depends how fast you drive. Um, <clears throat> cool. So, uh, where where did you go to school? Then is there a school in down Patrick? And what? How how did you get on? Uh, and school, how did you yes, go to education? Yes, so I, I went to a primary school called Dan Patrick Primary, um, and it would be an integrated primary school, so it had both Catholic and Protestant um, mm. members. Then I went to an integrated high school called Blackwater Integrated College, and um, I went there. And um, the first three years of that school, I, well, my whole primary school experience probably wouldn't have been the best but um i did really knuckle down in fourth year and fifth year and get good grades but yeah i mean i had 50 50 experience in terms of education i was a bit as you know i am mental so me as a younger age would have been 10 times worse so i was mental in primary school and then i was kind of mellowed out in high school and then i I didn't really. I mellowed out in like fourth year and fifth year, the years that actually mattered. But yeah, no. So I could have done better, but I didn't. So just gotta live with it. Right. So you did. You, did you do it okay though? Or did you get GCSEs? Yeah. Then? Yeah, yeah. I got GCSEs. Um, I got good grades in them, and relatively good grades. Um, so yeah, good. I did pretty well. Cool. So you did well. You did. You did relatively well at school, and you you enjoyed school. Uh, sounds well enough. Um, at what point did you meet YI? What point did you come in contact with youth initiatives? Well, I came in contact with youth initiatives earlier. Um, I wasn't necessarily a participant in YI. Right. At the age I came in contact with YI because obviously my older sister Haley, um, she was volunteering before my sister Chloe and me um, but I knew of YI at a relatively young age um, at about I would say about the age of eight I knew about YI mm-hmm. but I wasn't a participant until I was 10. Nice. My first year of YI was actually a summer schemes um, and it was Johnny's Johnny Ewan's last year in Dan Patrick. I actually think it was his last summer schemes before he left to go to Canada or something right. to work but yeah no I, I had a relatively young enough age into why I because I think the age back then was 11 so I was 10 I'm near sure I'm 100% positive on that just knock in fake ID you know that oh uh, yeah <laughs> um, good I think I was at that summer I was involved in that summer scheme West I was in West Belfast though at the time um, so we probably met in Port Rush or something like that. Probably. Probably. Or Newcastle, I think that year was. Mm, right, right, right. Know, all merges into one when you get old. Um, good. So you started going when you were 10, right? So it's obviously been a, been a while since then. What age you now, 18, 19? I'm 19. 19. So um, been a long time. What, what kept you coming back for that long? Um what did you like about it first and then what, what kept you coming back? Well, first it was, as a young person, it was just my friends. Um, so obviously the year after, I, the, the summer schemes after I joined, um, two of my best mates joined, Corn and Aaron. Um, and they were really like, they just, Corn was already involved with YI because of his mum, but I just, I liked the, people in YI, the staff members, the volunteers, and um, I felt it just was very homey and, um, you know, it was very just welcoming 
and then as I got older, I started to experience more stuff in my eye in terms of the um, faith aspects, uh, other programs for different types of people. Um, and yeah, I just really liked it. And then I became a volunteer. And then it was like a total game changer for me because I was just like, oh, this is, this is what why I actually is. Like, this is, mm-hmm. this is the part of why that people talk about. And then I, was, I just got hooked. Mm-hmm. And I'm still hooked on it. Mm-hmm. And now I'm doing an internship and it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, what, maybe if you have a think about, like, what, what was it specifically that hooked you? onto it and like the, what was the difference between being a volunteer that really really, really got you involved with okay um so the thing that really got me hooked was whenever you're volunteering you're not really thinking about the the impact you're having on the young people mm-hmm when you take a step back and you look at what impact you have had on on them or when they tell you the impact you've had on them or when they ask you to pray for them for the first time, that is like the equivalent of, it's just a really great feeling of accomplishment and you just feel like you're, you're needed, you're wanted, and you're just like, this is why I volunteer, this is why I do this, and this is why I always come back, and I don't know, it's just something that, like that is a personal experience for me, and Mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons why I got hooked on the volunteering aspect of youth initiative. So, um, what what would you say that overall that YI is meant for your life? Like, where are you because of it, and where might you be without it? Well, I feel like why well, I has made me a better person, um, just in terms of my attitude towards life, people, um, and like the past staff members coming and going, teaching me how to deal with loss. And well, not when you say loss, it just sounds mm. like they died, but they're not dead. Um, but teaching me how to deal with grief as well because um and, and so much other stuff and why i is just a place where if you're struggling you can come to them and they will just absolutely devote their time to you and invest in you and it's just an amazing feeling to, to know that you're being invest in, invested in by people that have no connection to you at all but they see something in you that you don't see yourself and it's just an amazing feeling for them to pull it out of you and to go, do you see it now? And you're like, yeah, I do. And thank you. And oh, it's just class. Yeah. So like, why I in my life, I wouldn't have any of that, but I would also probably be, I, w- I was a massive troublemaker in terms of in high school, as well as being a melter. And I feel like I would just be in so much trouble now if I didn't have YI telling me to like past staff members that I know of that really helped me deal with my, I would say, it's not an issue. It's just a thing that I do that I don't really recognize that I'm doing, but I feel like I would probably be in serious trouble or uh, or getting into serious trouble for no reason. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's why I put me back into the real world, uh, real world and opening my eyes to who I am and what I am and what I, what my potential is. I wouldn't be the man I am today without why I. Good. Good. So what's next? So what's next year potentially looking like? Where are you hoping to, where are you hoping to go? Well, I'm hoping for a, career in YI but I mean um, I'm a person that likes to get as much experience behind me before diving into a, I don't really know what's next um, but 
whatever is next, I am open to it. But I want youth work to be my career or youth ministry either. Yeah. Um, I love both. Um, I never really seen the difference between the two before I joined YI mm-hmm. as a intern, but there are two distinctive and different careers. Um, but I want either one um, or both. If a job comes up that has both in it, mm-hmm. then yeah. But I want, I would love to work for YI full time. Um, but I mean, obviously, it comes down to funding and availability. But no. Why I is where I want to be, and I'm going to continue to volunteer next year. Good, good. So, when are you coming to visit Scotland? <laughs> That's hopefully soon. Um, Get you involved in that project over here. Oh, I would love to be able to just come and experience your programs because I love doing that with different areas. Um, and yeah, good. hopefully soon. Good. And last question Have you sorted out that alarm clock yet? <laughs> the alarm clock oh yes um well it is sorted um i don't use my <laughs> alarm clock anymore i use an amazon alexa so mm. it, it's, a little, it's a little it's a little bit louder um uh-huh. it wakes me up a lot quicker because um, does it still wake up people in the next room and all that and i i don't really know how to ask <laughs> um but i'm pretty sure it does because it's pretty loud but i like to keep it at like a a lower level so it like it gradually builds up to a louder yeah. level yeah mm. yeah no as if, if for, it out. for those listening so if, if you've not guessed there is a there's a background story here of of the one night <laughs> a certain person got to spend away with, with no kids around turned out lewis's alarm clock was in the next room going off at five o'clock and six o'clock <laughs> no sleep for the wicked that's a good point so um, Lewis, thank you very much for your time. It's been an honour hearing your story, hearing hearing hey, all the things you've walked through and journeyed through. It's been a joy to spend some time with you in this past year uh, as your internship year. Um, thank you for the work you do. Thank you for devoting yourself to the young people of Downpatrick, and hope their future career pans out the way you would like it to. And um, keep working away. I'm sure it will. Right, Lewis. See you later. Yes, thank, you. thank you for your time. Bye.